I have here 2018's Connoisseur's Game of the Year, Quacks of Quedlinburg, on my desk. Now, some people describe this game in a little, not the, in, with, with some critique, let's say that. And so some people say that luck heavily determines the winner of this game and that, you know, there's runaway victories that even though there is a catch up mechanic, it doesn't do the job well enough. Now I could describe that, I could use those same very critiques for a game, another game that I love, Dominion. It's got luck as a heavy determining who the winner is. There's some runaway winners. Uh, there's some catch up, a little more so in Quacks of Quellenberg, but the point is, that's just the style of game where Quacks has a lot of variants. Dominion had a lot of variants as well, and Quacks has a lot of great things going for it, just as many other games like Dominion has too. So some of the things that shine in this game, I think the obvious one, just look at this box art. It's very unique theme and art are compelling in themselves. Now some other things that make this game really fun and the simple basics are simultaneous turns. That's a fun thing. There's no downtime or very little of it. Uh, it's got multiple setups, multiple strategies. So even within the same setup, you can go in different lanes like you could with Tiny Towns or Dominion. And uh, some other things that come into play for this game beyond just the mechanics themselves, I think are better explained if I set it up. But they add, maybe not to the actual mechanics of the game, but how much fun you have during the game. Let's set it up. Now, one thing I really do want are those Board Game Geek bits that, you know, you replace these little uh, cardboard pieces with, uh, they look like plasticky. They, they look like they'd be so much better to play with. Like they would actually increase my ability to shuffle because you shuffle all the little bits in here in this bag. It's a little tough. It's definitely doable with these pieces, but if they're all rounded plastic pieces like it's shown in the pictures, then you know that sounds like it's worth investing in if you really like this game. And I think this game is a great one that'll stand the test of time because of where it sits on when you would bring it out with different friend groups and things. Now I talk about details a lot, but as I'm setting this up, just notice how it's not white cardboard that's separating all the components. They put on art on it. That's great. Set up now, it's all shuffled. Let's get into it. So the basic principle of the game is you have a set of one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, nine little chips that start in your bag. And they range between one and four, the number on them. Uh, and you'll be adding more of different types and what those do are described by these little spell books. So blue lets you select your next chip after you play. Green, if it's the last one, you get a little resource. Red gives you uh, a little speed bonus if you have orange in there. Black, if you have more than other players, uh, lets you increase your ability to start further ahead for the next round. So all these, and there's more that get added. You can see some purple and yellow here that aren't represented. Those get adder, added into the game later as you go in. So the second round, you get access to yellow. Third round, you get access to purple. And fourth, fifth, sixth, you get, uh, you're just growing your bag of goodies and trying to flood it with good little chips because there's also the white chips. The white chips don't have a spell book. They are the basic mechanic that makes you end your turn. Now, the brilliance of this game and why I feel like it makes, like I can compare it to a game like, a, de a deck building game like Dominion is, there's usually some cards in the deck that really don't function to your end goal, that don't really push you in the strategy that you're going for to, to win. And so white is actively working against you. So the more of colored uh, in varying numbers, so there's one, two, four, one, two, four, blue. There's ones of pumpkin, there's ones of black. Depending on the number, the more valuable. So a higher, a four is more valuable than a one. And the, the principle is you pull things out and you put it that many ahead of your uh, last piece. So I'm gonna play quick first round. So I get pull out a one, 
put it one away. I pulled out a two, I moved two spaces, place it, pull out a three. So I place it one, two, three. Now I'm in danger here because if I get more than seven, if I add up all the white, there's also a green and an orange in my bag that I could pull and I would be fine. But if I pull an amount out that equals more than seven, my cauldron explodes. That doesn't mean I'm out of the game. It just means I am hindered with how the round ends. I don't get the bonus die, which gives me potentially cool new resources. I don't get to get points and buy something. I just get one. So what it pushes you to do is create a strategy of, is it worth it? If I were to explode, what's the worst that could happen? I don't get points this round. I don't buy something new this round. Maybe that's not that bad. I'm just gonna push my luck. There's also the added benefit of, you know, if your bag is full of really great things that mitigate pulling out whites or just simply full of stuff so you just happen to pull out less because of the statistics. You're creating your own fates, but it's pulling you into this moment where the, the, the things I wanted to describe earlier that I think I can describe now are your friends are also pulling things out. So there's social pressure. They got ahead. I'm only at seven like purchasing credits and one point here. And you can see those indicated by the two numbers. The further you go into the cauldron, the more you can buy from the spell books and add to your bag and the more points you get. So seeing other players get higher and higher into their cauldron, you kind of want to take that risk. So right now, if I pull out a one white, I don't explode, I get a little further. If I pull out a green or an orange, I'm totally fine and can keep going. Whoop. Pull out an orange, kind of feel like I can keep going. Whoop. Oh, See, now I pull that two. Pretty unlikely because of my bag makeup, but now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've exploded, I don't get to roll the dice. And that leads to my other point that makes this game great, is big memories, big moments get made during the game. When you're pulling things out that you think are leading you to victory and then you explode, oh my goodness, that is something to remember, something to get mad about maybe, uh, if you know, you're really into the game and want to win, or you get the big payoffs that you're hoping for, you got the big four blue, you didn't get the, the red one, you keep pulling by accident, you didn't get a white, you got the big four blue, so you move it ahead and then you're safe for a few more rounds. So there's lots of fun, memorable moments built into this game because of the way you're building your bag so you know what's in there, at least mostly. If you forget, then that's your fault, but you know, you're building a lot, you're playing a lot, that might happen. But that's what makes the game. It's, you know, there's this element of coming back and that's what this little rat thing is. If you're falling behind, you get kind of a, a safety where you're starting a little ahead of your teardrop because you can move this up, start higher every round. That's like part of the mechanics that, you know, it doesn't make or break the game. The thing that makes this game great and why people keep coming back to it, keep talking about it, is because there's stories of the big pulls out of the bag you got that either made you explode or you told your friends, you should just pull one more. You're so close. And then they explode. There's nothing like this game that I've played recently. And there's so many parts that make it even more replayable. There's different spells where you flip them over. There's a whole nother set for different amount of players. You can alter the rules a little bit. There's these little cards that change every round and how it's played. This game is great. If you haven't had a chance to play it, I highly recommend playing Quacks of Quedlinburg. As always, there's a reason why it won an award and I have been enjoying it immensely. Now on the opposite side, there are people who don't like how the variants can really destroy them and make it feel a bit unfun because of it, where they felt like there's no chance in them catching up and when they tried, they were pushing too hard and they exploded and they're even further behind. That's fair. That's why the games aren't that long. About 45 minutes, you could play another round, hopefully get a little better. Maybe it's not for your group, but it's been a game that everyone has loved and wanted to play again. That's how I know, that's one indicator at least, that this game's a winner, is that people want to play it again immediately after. They saw some glimmer of, ooh, I wanna play that again. And 
set it back up, maybe a new setup, and there's a, a new game to play. One quick strategy as I'm putting this away is early in the rounds, round one, two, or three, I typically just go until I get at least 10 coins to buy the black. Black early game is great, later game not as good. It can help you push ahead, and so it doesn't really matter in the early game if you explode. You just take the credits to buy stuff over the points and you don't fall too behind. That's my strategy at least, so take that with a grain of salt, see if it works for you. I don't know about you, if you've played this game, I typically like to buy yellows and blues. It doesn't matter the setup. For some reason, those are really great to buy in most of the spell books. What do you think? Have you gone for other strategies? My wife tends to buy the purples and I keep, I, I continue to be tempted by them and then just end up buying more blues, more yellows for some reason. How is Connoisseur defined anyways? So that's Quacks of Quedlinburg.